Stitchy friends. Have you missed me? Um, I am sorry. It's been almost a month since my last video. Actually, it's been over a month since my last video. That was not the plan at all. I'd really hope to do a Christmas video. I'd really hope to do a New Year's video. So this today, January 18th, is going to be my Happy New Year video. I hope you all have, have been having a good one so far. I hope you had a lovely Christmas. Hope you got blessed with all kinds of goodies. Got to spend special time with lots of loved ones. Um, I have tried recording this video about four times. And the last time I was in here recording, it was just a total mess. I ended up throwing out the videos, <laughs> all four of them. Um, except I was able to save a couple segments that I can't really re-record at this point so I'm glad those turned out all right the um, the home renovation work took longer than we planned and it was very stressful the end of the year with Christmas we ended up having our Christmas a week late so we had it on New Year's Day and so even then it was pretty much thrown together at the end but I was actually happy for the last week of extra stitching days because I couldn't have finished my gifts if I hadn't had those few extra days so it worked out good in the end. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and insert a small picture here. This is what I call my little Christmas nook and this is about the extent of the Christmas decorating I was able to get in this year. So yes, that is my little Christmas tree I picked up at Borders about six or seven years ago when they were going out of business. They had some little, it's about, it's about 10 to 12 inches tall and it was on clearance for like 75% off. And it took me a couple Christmases, a couple holiday seasons to get the right decoration sizes because it was so small even the petite ornaments out there were just massive on it so I had to kind of be creative and come up with my own ornament ideas and it's still pretty basic but I think it's cute and then I just bought a small piece of fabric and kind of just ruffle it around the bottom for the tree skirt and the little Precious Moments figurine has an actual light inside of it that flickers so that it looks like the fireplace is lit. So um, I always enjoy my little scene, as it were, and at least I was able to do that much, so I was happy for that. Um, like I said, our Christmas is a week late, but I was able to get all my Christmas gifts that I was stitching finished up. And so now, since I promised you I would show you the finished products, I will insert the clip of the finished stitched gifts as they are framed and complete FFOs right here. I've got my finishes to share you, share with you from Christmas, my um, stitches that I got all finished up. This is gift number one that I gave to my brother and this one is, I don't remember the names of any of them so I will put the information down below, I'm just saying that from the top. This is, we, do, we don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. And I'm going to try to avoid the glare if I can. I think that turned out really good. Um, the, as soon as I saw this frame, I, I just had to have this frame for it. I don't know, it just felt right. And I'm going to go ahead and just give you one example. I'll show you how I laced it in the back. I don't generally show my um, my secret stuff, but I'll show you this, and I'll hide my note in the back. So this is my lacing job here. Um, these sides, we decided not to fully thread them all the way across. We just caught them up here and just threaded them a bit here on the four corners. Um, but they all turned out really really good they all turned out better than I expected them to in fact so I had a couple false finishes a couple false um, ready to frame scenarios and I learned a valuable lesson through this scenario 
of certain frame styles you cannot use for cross stitch pictures. Um, you have to go with frames with these kinds of, of uh, swivel things with ones that go over the top. If you try to frame with a frame where the, um, the swivel part is lower down and in between like a ledge, you cannot fit the bulk of cross stitch fabric in there. So yeah, I messed up four times getting frames because I didn't know that and I had to go back out and reshop again and in a way I was okay with it because I actually ended up with better frames the second time around but yeah valuable lesson you have to make sure you have enough room for the thickness of the fabric in the front and then the fold over in the back so just just let let that be um, a little word of wisdom to you this is the second one I did and or this one is are you telling me you built a DeLorean out of a uh, time machine out of a DeLorean I keep saying it backwards but that's this one and this brother really 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 liked this one um, this was a huge hit in fact and I love the frame it's got this really cool wood type texture to it and it's gold and I felt like that really pulled out the flame effect I, I thought that added to it so yeah that one was a, a big hit and I think it turned out really nice. This is number three. This is the Mario silhouette. And this frame pulled out the tone of the bricks really, really well. I had been looking and looking and looking. This was the hardest one to find a frame for. And then I spotted this one. And it happened to be on clearance at Target. And it was perfect. Everything else I've been looking at was like three times the price, and it just did not look nearly as good as this one. So, really, really happy with that. Again, laced in the back. My mom helped me. It's really easier to do lacing if you have a third hand. At least that's what I've found. And since I don't have a third hand myself. And then, hang on one second. Yeah, I messed up something. I'll fix it later. This is the fourth one that I have alluded to on my Instagram, but I've never shown anyone anything, not even a, a, a teaser picture. So this is the fourth one, and this is the one I did from my mom, and she loved it, and I was so glad. I said before, she's had some health issues, and I just felt like she needed a little bit of an encouragement that she could put on her wall and be just brought up a bit, you know, in... in in her um, train of thought just think better think bigger don't stop don't stop dreaming and she's loved Tinkerbell since she was a little girl and so it just felt so right when I was doing it although it was so stressful to stitch this because other than the words the whole picture was confetti it was just solid confetti everything can I get close enough there you can see that it's all confetti in there it doesn't look like that big of a picture, but it really took a lot of extra time with that. Um, but anyway, it turned out great. She loves it. I love it. I'm really happy. She's really happy. The world is, is all singing now. So, no complaints on that. Um, there were three issues with three different frames, but it turned out really good in the end. So, I am done with complaining on that. So, that was a good Christmas. It started off with a bang, and... I was actually able to save those gifts for the very last so that they were the last things anyone opened up and everyone loved them. So um, this year I went ahead and did my tally for 2017 stitching and it was slightly less than I had hoped for but it was still good. I'm not trying to compete with those who have said they were able to finish 60 stitches last year. I can't compete with that. That's just that would stress me out but I did do a tally and I found out that I had 12 new starts in 2017 I had nine finishes with seven FFOs those being the four Christmas gifts this picture that is on this wall over here that I finally framed it was the baby sampler gift I gave to my brother for his daughter who was born in August 
and an ornament that I finished. That doesn't sound all that impressive, but most of my stitching I found actually, the majority of my stitching was actually gifts this year. So nine finishes, seven FFOs, and I'm currently working on nine whips. So 2018, I decided I did want to start with a new, a new beginning, a new project. And so if you're following me on Instagram, you would have seen this already. But I went ahead and I started my Jardin Privé Sampler of Chats. And I'm really loving it. It's been a very simple, very fast stitch so far. I am stitching it on Light Oatmeal Fiddler's Ada, 18 count. And the thread I'm using is Threadworks Bleeding Hearts. And I love the variegation on that thread. It's really subtle, but it's really rich. Um, it's very, very pretty. There's a lot of warm and cool combinations, so it really fluctuates between the colors well. And I'm really loving it. I love that there are so many little details to it. There's little tiny mice and there's a heart and a key and there's more kitties than that to come. What I finished today, just earlier today, is this lace bit. I had been working on this um, the last two days. I finished I finished the bottom three or four rows of that today and so I'm really really liking this a lot. I think it's really pretty, really cute and um, I think I'm gonna put it away for a week or so while I pick up another project and get some more progress done on another project because honestly all of my stitching last week of November and the whole of December every bit of my stitching was for my gifts so I don't have any more progress since my last video other than this new start I would really love for 2018 to be a year of finishes where I really start tackling those whips and UFOs I've been holding on to for so long. But I don't want it to only be older projects I finish. I really want to start a couple new ones. Um, I have some plans for that I may share at the end of the video. Um, yeah, I want to I want to start a couple new projects, but I do want to get get some good finishes in this year because I'm, I'm ready for some of the uh, older ones to just be out of my rotation. So that's that. That's all the progress I have this month. <laughs> I can't believe it's been like five weeks since my last video. Every attempt to do another video has been completely foiled. It's blown out the window. Um, the last couple weeks have been really, really stressful. My mom and I have been on a very strict, very restricted diet that's extremely low carb. And it's not for a New Year's resolution or anything like that. It is that my mom is on a cleanse of sorts for her health. And I decided to join in on that with her. And you know, it's easier when more than one person's doing it. Plus, since I usually take care of the food, it's easier for me to just eat along with her instead of cooking two different meals at a time. So hopefully this can kind of kickstart a little bit of a weight loss for me as well. I've already lost a couple pounds, but um, yeah, it's going to be strict for a few more weeks during, during the cleanse, but uh, hopefully the results will be well worth it and she'll be feeling better from that. Um, the diet is we have to stick between 50 and 100 carbs per day, including vegetable carbs which can rack up pretty quick if you eat the wrong kinds of vegetables. But um, I'm working on new ways of cooking chicken and things like that. I have found you can make a really, really tasty breading out of just almond flour, straight almond flour and some seasonings. You can make a pretty good tasty breading for some fried chicken. So that's what we've been enjoying some of that. One of the best things we've had of making some soups and um, she also can't have soy or grains of any kind. So the only real carbs, like starchy carbs, we're able to really have would be like a potato or sweet potatoes slash yams. So yam fries, uh, mashed, mashed yams. Um, we're using cauliflower and we're, um, we, I have been chopping up 
cauliflower into little florets and then processing them through the food processor, making it into like a, um, a couscous consistency and then I'll fry that. And we've been able to kind of use that as like a, a rice base. So I've been finding some interesting ways of using vegetables to be more filling and make you feel like you're not being so deprived. One thing I've also been trying to do is I'm trying to roast almonds with different seasonings, trying to get some variations for some snacks. And I'm not loving what I've done so far, but it's something to crunch on. So it's something to kind of, when you get the munchies, you can do that and we can have some grapefruit. So that's good. I'm sticking on the diet with her about 90% and I'm having a little bit extra on the side because I can't get my blood sugar too low or then we have another problem altogether. But anyway, I thought I would go ahead and show you a couple of my highlights from my Christmas because I was blessed this year. I got a couple stitchy items and then a couple other things that are just kind of cool. So. I will start with this. My mom got me this. This is the companion Riolis kit to the Iris Fairy I already had, which is, she was blue and green and white, er, yellow. And this one is all purple, pink, and blue. Very cute. I really like this one a lot. This was my, my favorite of the two, actually. But the other one I found for such a good deal, I got that one first. And my mom followed it up with this one, so that's great. And I love that it's got all the flosses and the colors are so pretty on that. So that's going to be an enjoyable, an enjoyable kit. I don't even know what the name of it is. Honestly, it doesn't even say it. It doesn't say a name. It just says number 1562. So that's that. And then my brother completely shocked me. I found out later he conspired with my mom and she told him what, to, you know, what he could do. He got me this kit, which I have had my eye on for quite a while. This is the Jim Shore Design Works Kitty Angel, and I love this kit. I love those kitty cats on the bottom. They're so playful and sweet. I really, really like that girl. I like her a lot. So he did good. Uh, he did good on that. He chose well. And he also got me... Uh, five skeins of Gloriana silk that I needed for my Paris Mandala from Chatelaine. I am really excited about that. I only need like two more strands of thread and then I have that completely kitted up. Uh, so that was exciting. Um, I'll show you a couple other things I got. My mom also found these for me. I was so excited. Um, she knows I love these and I have most of the collection already. So she got me Cinderella of these canvases. So cute. She's got sparkles and everything. Um, yeah, Cinderella and she also found me Aurora. Isn't that great? So I got those two. I previously had Belle, Ariel, and Snow White. And I will say, Snow White is my favorite. I love the bold red and blue that's on Snow White. But I'm thrilled to have the whole... The only one I don't have now is Jasmine. But I'm really excited now to have most of the entire collection. That's great. I was really excited about that. Um, my brother got me something that blew me away just a bit. Sorry if I crinkle. I, this is totally up, up my alley. I love puzzles and I love solving things. My brother got me an extreme dot to dot. I opened this package and I was really excited. And then I opened the book and kind of went, oh. Oh my word, you've got to see this. Look at these. Look at this. Look at those micro, tiny little numbers. Oh wow, they are all like that. They are all micro, tiny, just 
spectacularly tiny and, and amazing. And each picture has at least 1,200 dots. So this is going to be hours and hours of, of fun. And I have finished three of them so far. That's the Golden Gate Bridge. And there's one in here. Hang on. I tried opening a page from the wrong direction. Then we've got this one. And the amount of detail on this is kind of spectacular. It is required, though, to have a straight edge ruler, a good mechanical pencil, and a good eraser. Um, I use a metal ruler because it was very, very precise. I need a small one because the big one I have is kind of cumbersome, but it's this is a great book. And let's see, I've done the first three, and this is Roman Colosseum. So this is just fun. I'm gonna have a lot of a lot of time doing this. Um, it will take away from some stitchy time, unfortunately, but <laughs> I like this stuff enough. I am okay with that. Um, that I guess that's one thing that that um, I've come to realize. I may not have as much progress in stitching as others as other floss tube channels do um, because I like other things as well I don't strictly stitch so I like to knit and crochet and I like to do other things with my hands and I like to write and I do I do different things so I may not have a whole ton of stitching to show you each video but I'm doing other things behind the scenes you may not be aware of so all right I got a tin of one of my favorite teas from Harney. This is called Vanilla Camaro. And I've not opened it yet because I still had a couple more bags in my last tin. But this stuff's really good. Um, if you want suggestions on tea flavors, I do know of some good teas through Harney. So there, uh, that's yummy. My mom made sure I was well stocked up on some socks. I love socks. My feet are like ice cubes this time of year. And kitty cats. Oh yeah. She knew she couldn't go wrong with those. So I love, I love fuzzy warm socks because I seriously need them. Sometimes I will take these ones that are double layered and I will literally wear two layers of socks with them because my feet are so cold. Right now I'm wearing two layers of socks because my feet are so cold and they're still cold. So, um, and then, okay, I do have two more things I'm going to show you gift-wise, and I will show this one, because this one tickled me when I saw it. And clothes are such a, a taboo thing to give me for gifts, but this one worked out perfectly. Yep, I got a sleep shirt, and it says, coffee please. Oh, I love this shirt. It's great. It's great. Um, it fits me perfectly, and it's very flattering. I don't like low necklines. It just it just gets me really flattering, and I love the statement. And then the last thing I'm going to show you, my brother got me. So fun. He really scored this year. Looky there. Oh, I love that. But wait, but wait. <laughs> it's one of those. I cannot tell you how how in how intrigued I am by these things anytime I'm in a store and I happen to see like a, a, a mermaid scale uh, pillow or throw or anything like this I have to stop and play with it I have to there's just no other option I love these things they're so much fun and I, they are so great. He said they also had a teal color one, but when he looked it over, it was ripping out on the, on the bottom seam. And so he figured I would prefer to have one that was not wrecked. And I'm like, you know, you're pretty smart, <laughs> but I love that. Isn't that cool? Ah, love it. I saw um, a fishtail a fishtail blanket that had this on the bottom half. Oh my word. I wanted to take it home with me, but it was just more than I could afford. It was like $25. And I was like, no, I can't do that. But I really wish I could. They're so pretty though. They're so cool. Um, 
so yeah I was very blessed for Christmas this year I got some really fun things I got a couple other things I'm not showing because I didn't want to overdo it my mom got me a really really good lotion set that I desperately need this time of year my skin gets so so dry and my sister-in-law got me a book for calligraphy and some pens to go along with it and that's really fun I'm eager to try that the other thing is when I went out to do some returns after Christmas I bought a couple extra things so that I had things on hand just in case I was doing some returns and I found a couple things I had to have this was on clearance and it was just waiting for me I had to have it look at that pretty pretty color and look it's um, definitely it's obviously an eyeglass case but it was just waiting for me because I need to get some new glasses and I was gonna get a new glasses case and that's just perfect it's like my favorite shade of purple it's sparkly it's lacy ah oh, it was so pretty and it was on clearance for three dollars so you know I snapped that up right because I have it in my hand and then the other thing I got for myself just because sometimes I just can't resist certain things I got myself a new mug and it's in purples and lavenders and some turquoisey blues and it's got owls all over it ah, I love that and there's an owl on the inside I love that I had to have that I love the feminine the feminine mugs that aren't just plain straight sides I love that it's a little bit a little bit curvy and that fun I love that ah, love that so since it's been so long since I did a blast tube video um, I was gonna go ahead and try to do a couple things I've been missing out on in recent videos I did quickly want to do a couple shout outs to a couple floss tube watchers and one who does floss tube videos herself um, I received some Christmas cards and I received um, I already told you about the one gift I received last video which was um, the time traveler pattern from Joan Elliott with the floss that was awesome that was my early Christmas present um, I did want to shout out to Dawn at Frosty X Stitch she sent me a beautiful sparkly shimmery card all the way from Switzerland that was a treat that was truly a treat and she sent me a skein of DMC Coloris thread that I did not have so Dawn I was able to add that to my collection and I am very very happy about that she also sent me a needle minder that unfortunately did not make it to me because there was a hole ripped in the bottom of the envelope and it had fallen out in transit but Dawn the thought is what counts and the thought was so sweet and I thank you very much for sending me that little treat in the mail and I have your card up on display still because it was so pretty and sparkly I just wanted to look at it um, also I got a couple messages from a couple other floss tube watchers Tina and to Kim I will get back to your messages I am so far behind in emails I do apologize um, even family emails I'm just far behind on and it, things have just been so crazy hectic and I haven't had anything in order and everything's just been weird and wacky but I'm gonna work on it I will try to get you written back in the next few days um, let me see uh, I gotta keep on my notes here because I keep forgetting one of the reasons why my video didn't work out last time and I had to record it three times and then still trashed it was I kept not reading my notes and I kept missing things so okay I'm gonna skip ahead to I know I have neglected this little segment of my videos for a little while I have a recipe and I'm not going to read it out loud I'm just going to put it down below in the description this recipe is called harvest stew this is my absolute favorite soup ever 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 my whole family they love it when I make this soup this is like an occasion when I make this soup it's like party time kind of because everyone loves it it is just the most comforting the most 
delicious warming comforting soup I've ever made it's called harvest stew you should try it you will not regret it it is totally totally amazing so try that the recipe is down below it is definitely gluten free it's dairy free corn free it's great um, and then I was just going to show you this because I, I try, like to show little snacks when I find them that are good for those of you who are gluten free and needing that sort of thing. If you've not tried these, most of you probably have, but if you have not tried these before, go get them. I can find them at Target. They're great. The Lara Bars in the banana chocolate chip flavor. They taste like you're eating a piece of banana nut bread. They're so yummy. I have tried many, many I pretty much tried every flavor of Lara Bar that there is. This one is by far my favorite. It is so good, and it's limited edition, so if you want to try it, I would get there and see if you can still find them. Last time I was there, I ended up getting like five boxes because I don't know how long they're going to be available, and they are so good. And then I have to say, one of my newest snacks that I have become not addicted to, but very, very affectionate toward is rice pudding from Senor Rico. And you can get them at Walmart. I'm sure you can find them other places than that too, but that's where I usually get them. Uh, when I first went gluten-free, I tried to make, I'd never had anything like it before, but I saw a recipe for chocolate rice pudding and I tried it. And I can't totally blame the recipe necessarily, because it could have been my lack of, ex of, of experience with it. But I was so disappointed with that recipe. I did not like the chocolate rice pudding at all. So for the last eight or nine years, I, anytime someone said rice pudding, they love it. I'm like, ew, no. Well, my brother was talking to me about some snacks because he's also gluten free. And he said, I really like the rice pudding you get at Walmart. You should try it. So I finally said, all right, I'll try it. I tried it. After the first bite, I was hooked. I now want that stuff all the time. I have to control myself. So the original flavor of the Senor Rico rice pudding in the cups, those are so good. You should try those if you have any inclination for rice pudding at all. They are yummy, yummy, yummy. All right, that's the end of my gluten-free corner. Um, I don't know if I have a recommendation this week. I haven't even thought about that. Um, I recommend you try the recipe, A. Eh? Just include it. That's what I recommend. Okay, um, let me make sure what I've got here. All right, so my stitching plans for 2018 I really, really want to start The Time Traveler from Joan Elliott. I have not found the, pers the perfect piece of fabric yet, but I really want to start that. Um, I really want to start my Rosewood Manor Merlin's Tulips. That is, that got me. That's, that's, that's something I really want to do. Um, I also found another pattern a while back, and I do not know the name of it. I will tell you at some point later down the road. It's like a Russian pattern I found. So cute. It's a little girl with cats, and I totally want to stitch that one. And I think, again, it's a matter of finding the perfect piece of fabric, because I got the pattern, and I have all the floss for it. I just need the perfect piece of fabric. Um, and then I really want to get my... Blossom Harvest from Mirabilia finished. I think that would be a really good, um, a really good chapter closed on that. And I have like three or four other ones that have just been sitting around for an awful long time. I just need to tackle. Um, so those are my immediate plans. I'm going to start up a little bit more of a rotation so that when I do my videos, hopefully more often, um, I will have more progress each video to show and not just something on one or maybe two. So I'm working on that. Um, I will be placing a one, two, three stitch order before too long here um, because I'm going to get the last threads I need for Merlin's tulips. I was given some money for Christmas and I think I'm going to put, I'm going to put 
at least half of it towards my new glasses and then I'm going to just buy a couple things through one two through stitch with the rest um, because I really really want to get going on that project and just having the threads here will be such an encouragement and such a boost to me um, I've been a little stressed and so I, I'm looking for some things to kind of keep me motivated and, and kind of up my spirits but so, um, yeah, looking forward to that. I did place one order online and I'm looking forward to getting it. I placed an order from um, Stash Unload and I ordered, dare I say it, I ordered some needle minders. I need more needle minders like holes in the head, right? I don't care. I love them. So I ordered a couple needle minders. Those should be coming and I'll show those when I get those. Um, other than that, I don't have any outstanding orders. I've been trying to be really good on the stash and not spending more money after Christmas. Perhaps after a month or two when all the Christmas bills are gone, I can then feel a little more free to indulge myself a bit more. But, um, I was sad to hear of the passing of Martina, the designer of Chatelaine. That was very sad news. She has been such an amazing contribution to the stitching community, and I love several of her patterns. I actually have a couple of her patterns and plan to stitch them. So any words I've said in the past that could have been um, negative towards her, I'm not against her as a designer. I, I just had a bad experience, and it kind of, it kind of made me not the most happy individual. Um, but I am sorry for, for her loss and for her family. They must be going through a hard time just around Christmas. So um, that was very sad. Um, my brother was in a car accident just before Christmas. And he's okay. Thankfully he is. He was not injured. Um, maybe just a little bit sore. But he wasn't, you know, grievously injured or anything like that. His car was totaled. So we've been helping him out with having access to a car. And so it's been a little more challenging getting out and about since since the car is a little more in 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 um demand right now i got a message the other day from another floss tube watcher who again said they would like me to read my narnian poem and i have been wanting to do that i've been really wanting to share that narnian poem and i've been really disappointed because i have been pursuing the copyright I've been pursuing contacting and getting permission to do so and I have not gotten any response at all I don't know if my messages have been lost if I have not been contacting the right place but I've been really disappointed in that but I would love to share that poem I've just been wanting to get it copywritten first and it hasn't been working so I'm gonna pursue that again and try that and hopefully if, if it will work out I will I, I will and would love to share that poem with you uh, to this day when I read it, I still get chills. I, I love that poem so much. So I hope you guys are all having a great 2018 so far. I cannot believe that 2017 is gone and that it's just flown by. Um, today is actually my brother's birthday and yesterday was my dad's birthday. So I'm trying to work this video in when I'm not too terribly busy. Um, cause it's been pretty busy and I haven't had much opportunity to do videos lately. Hopefully that will ease up a bit and I can update you more often. By the way, I did have a question and hopefully you guys feel free to answer this if you, if you want. What is it that brings you to a floss tube channel? I'm just curious. Is it the project? that you mainly look for? Is it the progress reports? Is it the stash so you can see what kinds of things are out there? Is it the chatting, the rambling on? Is it the personality of the person doing the videos? I'm just genuinely curious to know what brings you to a channel and what continues to bring you back time and time again. Um, if you have been eyeing anything at my Etsy shop and you've been holding off on ordering it, I wanted to let you know that I am currently having a sale in my Etsy shop and it's good for the next few days. Um, the gold fobs I showed last video have been long gone, but I still have plenty more there available. And again, if you have a special request for a certain kind of theme, a certain kind of color, let me know. I am totally up for special requests. Uh, hope you're having a great year and that this is one of the best years yet and you finish all the projects you want to. 
and you love it all. So until I see you next time, guys, have a, have a great life. Just, just live it to the fullest and be blessed. Ciao for now. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way.